हेलो फ्रेंड्स ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स एम आई ऑलिबल टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स आर यू गेटिंग माय वॉइस परफेक्टली ओके फाइन सो फ्रेंड्स यू रिमेंबर दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग the first chapter of the subject of basic mechanical engineer the chapter name that is the introduction and if you remember in the last lecture we have discussed several points related to the engineering thermodynamics starting from the basic terms of the thermodynamics we have discussed the concepts of the state path process and the cycle then we have understood the concept related to the thermodynamic system the thermodynamic surroundings as well as the boundary and we have discussed one of the most important question that can be asked in your examination that was the types of the thermodynamic systems mainly the thermodynamic systems are divided into three types the first one that is the open system the second one that is the closed system and third one that is the isolated system so let me ask you a question simple question related to these thermodynamic systems so friends in which thermodynamic system there is only the energy interaction in which thermodynamic system there is only the energy interaction closed system okay okay fine very good that is the perfect answer from majority of the students and all are giving me the correct answers that is very good from your side and also friends in the last lecture we have understood the concepts related to the thermodynamic properties in the thermodynamic properties we have understood two types of the properties they were the intensive properties and the extensive properties intensive properties are those properties which are independent of the mass or they are not dependent on the mass whereas the extensive properties are those thermodynamic properties which are dependent on the mass so let me again ask you a simple question temperature is which type of thermodynamic property temperature is which type of thermodynamic property okay i am getting the answers from the students intensive intensive okay intensive intensive okay so majority of the students are giving me the perfect answer that is the correct answer so temperature is an example of the intensive property it does not depend on the mass of the system so i hope the concepts are perfectly clear in your minds which i have discussed up till now so let us proceed further in this session so these are the contents which i am going to cover in the current session in this lecture we are going to discuss some of the terms related to the change of the state then we will understand the concept of thermodynamic equilibrium and we will understand the concepts of the internal energy as well as the enthalpy and finally we will understand the laws of the thermodynamics so let us start with the first topic 
i hope seeing the terms you might be remembering the definition of these terms these terms are very simple to understand the first term that is the melting point so it is the temperature at which the solid is converted into the liquid state when the heat is supplied next is the boiling point so it is the temperature at which the liquid is converted to the vapor state again when the heat is supplied next point that is the critical point remember friends critical point is the temperature and pressure above which only one phase is exist that means at this particular point the temperature and the pressure value remains the constant and at this point we will be having only one phase of the substance that one phase can be either the solid phase or the liquid phase or the gaseous phase so repeating the definition once again the critical point is the temperature and the pressure above which only one phase is exist and the last important term that is the triple point it is the state at which the substance can coexist in the solid liquid and the gaseous phase and all these three phases exist in the equilibrium conditions hence this particular point is known as the triple point because at this point all the three phases of the substance they exist in the equilibrium states i hope you are getting the points which i am trying to deliver to you moving further with the next point that is the phase change terminology i hope you might have studied this phase change terminology at your school level so let us have a quick revision of the points which we have studied so whenever we are converting the solid phase into the liquid phase the name of the phase change that is known as fusion and the technical process is known as the melting process when we are converting the solid into the vapor phase the name of the phase change is known as the sublimation and the process is known as defrosting dear friends remember one point in engineering thermodynamics we are considering solid liquid and gas as the phase of the thermodynamic system the states which you are considering at your school level that are different in the thermodynamic system so remember this point perfectly moving further the phase change from liquid to the vapor that phase change is known as the evaporation and the process is known as the evaporating process when we are converting the liquid into the solid phase the name of the phase change is known as fusion and the technical process is known as the freezing process and finally the last phase change that is vapor to solid it is again known as the sublimation but the process is known as frosting and when the vapor is converted to the liquid state or the liquid phase the phase change is known as condensation and the process is known as condensation dear friends this is a very simple topic just you need to remember the names that's it moving further with the next topic and the important one that is the thermodynamic equilibrium
before understanding the thermodynamic equilibrium let us first understand what do you mean by the equilibrium state the state of the system in which the properties have the definite or the unchanged values as long as the external conditions are unchanged so we can consider that the state of the substance as an equilibrium state in simple terms for remembering purposes you can consider the equilibrium state as the stable state but when we consider the concepts of engineering thermodynamics we are considering the technical terms that is the equilibrium state so equilibrium state is that state of the system in which the properties have the definite or the constant values unchanged values until the external conditions are unchanged now let us understand what do you mean by the thermodynamic equilibrium the system is said to be in a state of thermodynamic equilibrium if the value of the property is same at all the points in the system whenever you are considering a thermodynamic system for the analysis point of view if the value of the property remains same at all the points in the system or throughout the system then we can consider that that thermodynamic system has attained the state of the thermodynamic equilibrium dear friends if we consider an isolated system it reaches to a state of thermodynamic equilibrium in a very short time because you are well aware that in the isolated system there is no mass transfer and there is no energy transfer between the system and the surroundings so isolated system can easily attain the state of the thermodynamic equilibrium proceeding further with the discussion of the same point if a system wants to attain the thermodynamic equilibrium then compulsory that system must have these three types of the equilibrium the system must have the mechanical equilibrium the chemical equilibrium and the thermal equilibrium mechanical equilibrium can be considered as the state of the system in which all the forces acting on the system or the forces acting inside the system all the forces are balanced by one another that means the system does not have any unbalanced force and if this condition exists in the system then we can tell that the system has attained the mechanical equilibrium let us consider the next point that is the chemical equilibrium a system is said to have attained the chemical equilibrium when there are no chemical reactions taking place inside the system or outside the system that means there are no chemical interactions between the system and the surroundings and also there are no chemical reactions inside the system so if these conditions are existing in the system then we can consider that system has attained the chemical equilibrium and the third point that is the thermal equilibrium so thermal equilibrium is that state of the system in which the temperature at all the points in the system remains constant so friends remember this point whenever a thermodynamic system wants to attain thermodynamic equilibrium then compulsory 
that system needs to attain three types of the equilibrium the three types are the mechanical equilibrium the chemical equilibrium and the thermal equilibrium i hope the basic concepts are perfectly clear in your minds related to the thermodynamic equilibrium let us proceed further with next important point and very simple point that is internal energy the internal energy is the energy which is possessed by a body or a system due to its molecular arrangement or the motion of the molecules in considering the technical perspective the internal energy is denoted by capital u okay there is one instruction risil soni join the group in the specified format risil soni are you getting my voice join the group in the specified format so internal energy that is denoted by capital u the specific internal energy is the internal energy per unit mass of the substance and the specific internal energy is denoted by small u generally friends the internal energy is a function of temperature the internal energy can be increased or decreased by adding or subtracting the heat to or from the system mathematically for calculating the internal energy of a thermodynamic system we are taking the equation that is q is equal to u plus w where q you are already aware that is the amount of the heat w that is the amount of the work done and u is the internal energy so these are some basic primary concepts related to the internal energy moving further with the next point that is the enthalpy the enthalpy in simple terms is defined as the summation of the internal energy and the flow energy so basically it is the addition summation of the internal energy and the flow energy enthalpy is a thermodynamic property which is denoted by capital h if we consider the specific enthalpy then it is known as the enthalpy per unit mass the specific enthalpy is denoted as small h absolute value of the enthalpy cannot be obtained so always we are calculating the change in the enthalpy mathematically as per the definition the enthalpy is represented as h is equal to u plus p where u stands for the internal energy and pv the product of pressure and volume that represents the flow energy so friends at this point let me again ask you a simple question enthalpy is which type of thermodynamic property enthalpy is which type of thermodynamic property options i am giving intensive property or extensive property Okay, I am getting some of the responses. Okay, I am getting here in this question. I am getting some mixed responses. See, friends, enthalpy from the definition only we are seeing that it is the summation of internal energy and flow energy. so basically the enthalpy will also be a type of energy 
energy is an extensive property it will be dependent on the mass of the substance so indirectly the enthalpy is also an extensive property getting the point those students who have given me the answer that is the intensive have you understood the concept enthalpy is a type of energy hence it is considered as an extensive property okay i am getting some of the positive responses so the doubts are clear to the students very good so moving further with the next topic and dear friends this is one of the most important topic dear friends this is one of the most important topic which is generally asked in your theory examinations so try to focus on the laws of the thermodynamics so that the concepts are perfectly clear and you can write down the perfect answers in the examination and score the perfect marks the laws of the thermodynamics we have, we are going to study three laws of the thermodynamics they are the zeroth law the first law and the second law. so let us understand these laws first one the zeroth law of the thermodynamics very simple to understand very easy to remember and if asked in the examination you can perfectly write down the answer and get the full marks of this question so zero it law of thermodynamics states that if the bodies a and b are in the thermal equilibrium with a third body c separate then the two bodies a and b shall also be in thermal equilibrium with each other i am repeating this statement once again because it is very important so zero it law of thermodynamics states that if the bodies a and b are in thermal equilibrium with a third body c separately then the two bodies a and b shall also be in thermal equilibrium with each other so in order to understand this particular statement i have given the pictorial representation in exam also you need to draw such type of the figures so that the presentation becomes nice and you can score the maximum marks so in the figure we are seeing that body a that is in thermal equilibrium with body c separately body b is in thermal equilibrium with body c separately both the bodies are in thermal equilibrium with body c separately differently then we can tell that the two bodies a and b shall also be in thermal equilibrium with each other okay some student roll number 74 mohammad are you getting my voice roll number 74 you have joined the different group for the lecture so kindly check in the details from your side roll number 74 mohammad okay friends so i hope the zeroth law of the thermodynamics you have perfectly remember the statement is clear to you as well as the pictorial representation also you have understood perfectly so the final point of this topic that is the zeroth law of thermodynamics is used for the temperature measurement all the thermometers which are used for measuring the temperatures of the bodies 
all the thermometers are calibrated using the concepts of the zeroth law of thermodynamics so i want the responses from the students the concepts are clear related to the zeroth law zeroth law you have understood perfectly okay thank you for the positive answer so i hope you will be writing perfectly the zeroth law in the examination and you will be getting the maximum marks moving further with the next law that is the first law of thermodynamics it is again very easy to understand because the first law of thermodynamics is the modification or the statement of the law of conservation of energy dear friends we have already understood and i have already discussed the law of conservation of energy so the law of conservation of energy we are knowing that the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed the energy can only be converted from one form to the another okay rule number 74 are you getting my voice mohammad rule number 74 okay so i am repeating the statement once again the first law of thermodynamics that is the law of conservation of energy which is applied to the thermodynamic systems the law of conservation of energy or the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed the energy can only be converted from one form to the another so the first law of thermodynamics is used for studying the relationships between the various forms of the energy and the energy interactions which are taking place between the system and the surroundings the first law of thermodynamics can be expressed as the change in the total energy that is equal to net energy transfer that can be either in the form of heat or the work either the transfer can be from the system or the transfer can be from the surroundings in the last lecture we have understood the sign convections of the heat and work so mathematically we can write down the first law of thermodynamics like delta e is equal to q minus w where well, delta e is the summation of the various energies possessed by the thermodynamic system that can be either the internal energy the kinetic energy the potential energy etc so i hope the first law of thermodynamics is also perfectly clear in your minds i want the responses from the students in the chat box the first law of thermodynamics is clear to all the students okay very good thank you all for giving the positive responses in the chat box thank you all of you now friends that is the complicated law that is the second law of the thermodynamics so try to focus on the points which i am discussing so that the concepts will be perfectly clear otherwise you will be getting tremendously confused in order to understand this statement so second law of the thermodynamics basically it is having two statements both these statements are identical in nature but the violation of one statement leads to the violation of the another statement the two statements of the second law of thermodynamics are the clausius statement and the kelvin planck statement 
So first, I will be focusing, discussing in details about the Clausius statement. So let us start understand the Clausius statement. The Clausius statement states that it is impossible. I am repeating this term. It is impossible. That means it is never possible. It is not possible. Clausius statement states that it is impossible to have a device that while operating in a cycle produces no effect other than the transfer of heat from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature. So in simple terms, we cannot develop a device which is operating in a cycle which transfers the heat from the body at lower temperature to a body at a higher temperature by itself. That means the device cannot automatically transfer the heat from the cold body to a hot body. If you go in some depth of this statement, I can tell that the reverse of the Clausius statement is possible. We can easily transfer the heat automatically from the body at a higher temperature to a body at a lower temperature. This transfer can be possible automatically. But when we want to transfer the heat in the reverse direction, that is not possible automatically. So this is the Clausius statement. I am repeating the statement once again so that you can gather all the points which I have discussed and you can somewhat understand what I am trying to deliver, what I am trying to explain on this statement. So Clausius statement states that it is impossible to have a device that while operating in a cycle produces no effect other than the transfer of heat from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature. Next now friends, let us proceed to the second statement of this law of the thermodynamics. The second statement that is the Kelvin-Planck statement. Again, at the beginning only you are observing, it is telling that it is impossible. So it is not possible, it is never possible. It is impossible for a device operating in a cycle to produce network while exchanging the heat with the bodies at the single fixed temperature. So try to understand the logic of the Kelvin-Planck statement we cannot develop a device operating in a cycle which continuously takes the heat energy from a body at a fixed temperature and produces the net amount of work. So for the Kelvin-Planck statement, I am repeating the statement once again, it is impossible for a device operating in a cycle to produce network while exchanging the heat with the bodies at the single fixed temperature. So friends, if we consider the concepts or the mechanical systems, all the mechanical systems or majority of the mechanical systems, they are developed considering the basis of the Second law of the thermodynamics. Some of the systems are using the modified concepts of the Clausius statement and some of the systems are using the modified concepts of the Kelvin-Planck statement. 
as we are discussing the further chapters in this subject i will highlight you those points where we are using the modifications of the clausius statement and the kelvin planck statement so i hope you are somewhat understanding these typical concepts related to the second law of the thermodynamics so friends with this point we are ending the first chapter that is the introduction during the discussion of the lectures i have highlighted the important points which can be asked in the examination and i hope the concepts discussed in these lectures are clear in your minds in the next lecture onwards we are going to start one of the most important chapter of this subject that is the third chapter properties of the gases properties of the gases is one of the analytical chapter there will be several mathematical derivations we will be understanding we will be doing and understanding those derivations understanding the equations we will be solving the numericals of the properties of the gases so in the next lecture we are going to start one of the most important chapter so friends with this i am concluding this session from my side thank you for watching this session have a nice day now the session is open to you the platform is open for solving your doubts or for solving the queries one of the student roll number 48 carnot cycle he has raised one of the statement okay friends carnot cycle we are going to understand in detail in the chapter of the heat engines so whenever i am reaching at that point of the time we are going to discuss all those points in context of the carnot cycle Okay, sixty-nine is having some doubt related to the Clausius statement. Okay, Clausius statement in simple terms it tells that we cannot develop a device which automatically transfers the heat from the body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature. I hope rule number sixty-nine. Now you have understood the concept of the Clausius statement. Any other doubt? Any other question? Anyone wants to ask? see second law of thermodynamics they are having two statements the clausius statement and the kelvin planck statement both the statements are very important in the clausius statement it tells that it is impossible to develop a device operating in a cycle which produces no effect other than the transfer of heat from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature in the kelvin planck statement tells that it is impossible for a device operating in a cycle which produces net work by exchanging the heat with the bodies at the single fixed temperature dear friends if you read this both the statements continuously if you think over it in some what details you will get in more concepts and you will understand the statements in a very much better way